welcome to the Happy Homeschooler podcast, a digital support group for everyone interested in a learning lifestyle. I'm your host, Melody. I'm your co-host, Holly. Today, our topic is going to be about ending the school year, the ins and outs of wrapping up the school year. And we're also going to talk about how to keep learning going all summer long. But before we jump into our topic, Holly, how have you been doing? Well, um, I've been doing all right, but we've had some challenges over here. I've had family members uh, with a lot of doctor visits and a hospital stay. So I'm just trying to hold down the fort. Sometimes they're like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Kind of like we've been having over here. I had extra grandchildren here this week. We had we hosted uh, three of our grandchildren that spent the night with us for several days. And at the same time, we also regularly watch for granddaughters. So I had seven kids in the house again, like I have in the past, but they weren't, you know, all the same age like this. And it was it was a busy week. I'll bet it was. Now, how many total grandchildren do you have? Fifteen. Fifteen. So you had half of them. I had wow. half of them here. <laughs> <laughs> the younger half. It was it was really fun. And they're very sweet and they helped each other. But it's still a lot of people to um, wrangle. Oh, for sure. You know. And they're not in their own elements. It's just totally different from when you're at home with your own. Right. They were, they were guests. And, of course, we got to coach them on how to be kind to one another and <laughs> how to share and all those things. But yep. it was a fun week. But I um, I was tired at the end oh, of the I week. Oh, I can imagine. I was. It was fun. Yeah. It makes me appreciate moms at home with lots of littles. I remember what that was like. Right. Yeah. A little ducks all in a row following them behind. I have, um, I was yeah. laughing today because um, I have a little dog and then I have my eight year old son and wherever I go in the house, they're very close to me because um, only children don't like to be by themselves. So I had just warned my son that um, if he came in where I was fixing my hair and makeup, not to stand so close because I could accidentally elbow him. And just a moment later, I was brushing my hair and my hair flipped out and hit him in the face. And I was like, this is why you don't stand so close. So we're working on some uh, little, give me a little bit more personal space, please. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, the difference between having a bunch right. of kids and having an only child. So even though I raised five kids, um, I'm still learning a lot of things on this uh, Mr. Number Six, who's an only. It's a little bit different. It is one on one. Well, all right, let's let's move into we're in April and May and we're wrapping up, getting ready to wrap up the school year. And so for people who have just started, they might be wondering what to do now. Some of us have been doing this for a long time. Well, we want to talk about some things that you can do to organize yourself for a strong finish to the year so you don't just, you know, fizzle out uh -huh. just because it's the end of May. Like but you're getting tired. Yep. Some people are ready for a break, and that's fine. One of the things that we did was set a date. Like, we all knew this was going to be our last day for this school year. We homeschooled year-round, but we always did take a break, and usually our cutoff was Memorial Day weekend. And so then I would have a month or so just to, well, really, to do all the things that didn't get done during the school year. <laughs> a lot we of putting on. A lot of things like that, and so we would – set a date and then we would um, look through the papers that had accumulated. We don't, I kept a lot of things for a lot of years. I mean, I have so seven children, each one, you know, they had a folder for the year. Nobody ever asked to see any of that except other homeschool moms, but you never know. Sometimes you need to document what you've been doing and some states require portfolios. Mm -hmm. So the end of the year is a good time to look through all of your things and keep samples. I would keep keep almost everything that was a composition that they had written because they were just so much fun to keep and read later. But I never kept math books except for one child who is an artist and drew all over her math in the margins on the edges while she was thinking. Oh, how about that? We, uh, we kept a lot of those, but we would keep compositions and artwork and samples of some things but I suppose there may be do you keep a lot of your materials or what did you save? So what I did is because I do Charlotte Mason style of education 
there's not a lot of paperwork involved, especially in the early years when children are giving oral narrations. But the things that that we did write out, like handwriting practice, math papers, um, artwork, like you said, those things I did keep. And I, I just kept all of it because it wasn't that large of a volume of material. And when I would file away um, the papers for the year, I'd just get a folder and I'd write on the side of it, you know, like um, for my son, Liam, Liam, first grade and put the, the year. And then I would put my teacher planner and I also keep an attendance sheet and I would put those all together so that if anybody uh, called into question our homeschooling, I would be able to say, here, I have been homeschooling. Um, and there wouldn't be, and I wouldn't have to struggle to put things together as proof. So sometimes when you apply for programs, um, some entities want to see your child's attendance records or mm -hmm. a report card or something like that. So, um, and, and like you, no one ever asked me for any of my uh, materials, not until high school, you know, when you're creating a transcript and the, the colleges or the trade schools want to see a transcript, but it only takes one disgruntled neighbor or a family member who, you know, has a problem with you to call into question what you've been doing and report you. So I always felt like it was better to err on the side of caution and get rid of the, the things later once my kids had finished school. And also it's really fun to go back and look at things that your children have done um, you know, when they were younger, little drawings they made or the way they their handwriting was. So for a nostalgia point, it's fun to keep those items, even if you're not required to. Oh, me, yeah, they're good keepsakes. And then mm -hmm. the kids have fun looking through those things, too. And in addition to the papers that we produce, because we did unit studies, so a lot of hands on work, we had pictures, we keep, but those ended up in the photo album. Like I didn't segregate everything. It was just. Mm -hmm integrated but we had pictures of the activities that we did but i would keep a list of the units that we studied mm -hmm. and they all had a list of the books that they were reading sometimes having a book list is evidence of the can be evidence of the work that you've been doing and so we would keep a book list and um sometimes it was the printout from the library of all the books we brought home <laughs> oh we yeah How bring clever. home baskets full of books for a while till they started limiting <laughs> but it wasn't uncommon, you know, if each child could bring home three or four books, we would end up with a great many books at home. And they take out their own shelf so we could keep up with them. But keeping track of what they're reading. And then if they did any kind of outside classes or took a class somewhere, it's a good idea. It's really important if you want documentation of that to get it right then mm -hmm. when that class is completed. If you have a certificate right. or some sort of documentation you want to you want to get it right then because if you wait too long you might not be able to contact those people and get that right. again or if your child has taken any kind of um, exam some people um, give their children a standardized exam at the end of the school year or their unit tests from their various books um, but yeah it's just a good idea to keep those records and i i would encourage people to do that so that's part of wrapping up the school year. How do we make sure that we don't fizzle out? Oh, well, some of that comes from your plan at the beginning of the year. But mm -hmm. I think that knowing for us, knowing that we had a, a stop date for a break kept us going. Because then we had things like half finished products, projects, mm -hmm. or a paper they're working on or something like that. Somehow having a deadline kind of motivated us to like finish strong. Let's finish these things up because once that day came and passed, the motivation to finish those things like flew right out the window. Mm -hmm. So we would, um, we're going to finish up, you know, that weekend just whenever it was and um, what's left to do. Let's, let's get these projects finished up. And that was one thing that would, that would keep us going at the end, just knowing that a break was coming. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was a good time for us to start looking at, like, what were my goals at the beginning of the school year? And did I hit the goals? Because I think we talked about this before. Where I would have, like, one, it, this is the one thing. If nothing else gets done this year, I want this one thing for this mm -hmm. child. There were more than one, obviously, but there's always something specific that somebody sure. seems to be working on. And I would revisit those goals to see if 
if we hit them? Did we meet our goals? And um, reconsider those for the next year. Kind of look at what went well that year or what went wrong or what was way out of our control. We all had a, a good taste of that this last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, use that to kind of think about moving on the next year. But mostly we just had a pause to wrap up what we were doing mm-hmm. before we um, before we headed on into the summer. What yeah, kind of things do you like to do to, to keep from burning out at the end? Right. So I um, I sit down at the beginning of the school year with my planner. I have actually two planners. Um, one is just an overall planner for the year. So I know what date we're going to start. And we do a 36 week school year broken up into 12 weeks um, terms. And then um, so I know what I'm supposed to finish at the end of the 12 weeks. So we're in our third 12 weeks and um, I show my son, we have to get these things done to be finished with school. So um, sometimes we get them done sooner. And if we get all the work done sooner, school's done. Um, you know, if we finish the math book a week early, uh, finished our other items, you know, if we did all of our read alouds, sometimes we sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. Sometimes mm-hmm. we're falling behind. But um, when we're done with the materials that we are going to work on, we're done. And so that's a big motivation to keep going. And to not, you know, not lollygag and waste time because we would both like to be off at that certain date, (laughs) you know, and then also having some fun things that are part of the end of the school year, I think help to keep going. Say if you say, oh, you know, at the beginning of May, each day in May, we're going to we're going to do this one thing or at the end of each week, we're going to do this one thing to celebrate that we're almost done. Finding a way to keep the interest high to get things done. Um, that's always helpful too. That's a good idea. Just to add a little bit extra fun in there. Right. Maybe Friday, one Friday afternoon, you have a water balloon fight or something, um, whatever works for your family, or you plan to take off early on a Friday and have a movie, um, you know, have a movie day or something like that. But, you know, encouraging your kids to Yep, we got to keep going, but here's something fun to do because we're working really hard. I think it's a really good way because public schools do things like that. You know, they have a pizza party or they mm-hmm. have some kind yeah, of an activity. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good to to take a, you know, borrow a page out of their book for your own school. Not to make your school like public school because that's not the goal, but to find some of that those fun activities that your kids might hear their public school friends say that they got to do. Um, you know, so that your school is a fun, equally fun and interesting place to be mm-hmm. educated. Our local group used to always have an end of the school year party, even though we knew that everybody wasn't ending at the same time mm-hmm. necessarily. But we'd all get together and do something fun or somebody had a pool, we'd go swim or we'd all meet at the park and have a park day with a picnic or mm-hmm. just something fun just to wrap it up. But it's important to mark those you know, rites of passage, and sometimes it's like, I've, you finished, you have finished second grade. So I always print my son out a certificate, and he looks do for you? it. Yep, I print him a certificate, then he's moving on to the next grade. So when he finishes his last math paper, we finish our last thing, I say, all right, you have finished, like this year, I'll say, you have finished second grade, and I'll present his certificate. You are now um, moving on to third grade, and he's so proud, and he'll go show his dad, and he'll call his nana, and that is a big deal to get that certificate. That is so cute. Plus, you can hang it up in the room. or I usually display it in the, in the living room in a little picture frame for, um, for a little while. And also, um, at the beginning of the year, you know, we do that little thing where we, we put how old he is and what his favorite things are and, and those kinds of little tidbits of information. And sometimes at the end of the school year, you know, I'll interview him again, like, hey, you know, and just see what, maybe how his ideas have changed over that year. Is his favorite color still his favorite color, whatever. But, but you know, doing something to mark that time has passed and you've achieved some things. I think, I think that's a really good way to help your kids finish the school year. Oh, I think so, too. Another thing that we did was, like, organizing the school supplies like we don't just quit we take the time to collect all the books again and Mm -hmm. you know reshelve them or put them someplace for the next year if we're finished or figure out who is going to use them next 
And uh, like we already mentioned, going through papers and selecting those kinds of things. But we also took time to organize the space again, get everything put away. Or I mean, we just had that organizing time. So it's like kind of like spring cleaning, but not really. And another time to figure out, like, all of my children would have a, a bin where all their school materials fit. Some years it was a milk crate. Some years it was like a tote with a handle and everything fit inside there. So that was time to empty that out and see what was in there. We always found surprises down the bottom. <laughs> and that was <laughs> it's like, oh, how'd that get in there? Yeah, my kids Inter had shelves. I had this tall kind of a bookcase and it had these shelves and they each had a shelf. And it was really funny to pull the things out and say, you know, you've been looking for this pencil or this eraser or, oh, that's where that math paper went that we couldn't find. The math paper stuck in the history book or uh -huh. yep. things all over. But that's always a good time for that clean out and kind of refresh the space and put things. I mean, we had our our bookshelves have our, you know, history books would go back in there in the year when we're using things that are curriculum materials those are typically stored in a different place from mm -hmm. all the rest of the books but because we use a lot of living books a lot of that just goes right back into the shelf mm -hmm. or it kind of lives there all the time and they just pull it off when they need it but it was a good time to reorganize and get things um, put away so that I could find them for the next time right. and then of course if it was somebody where I was at an they were at an age where I needed to be updating their transcript that was a good time to do that, too. It's just much easier to do it as soon as you finish a year. If you're waiting, you're just making it harder on yourself. Oh, for, for sure. Because when all that is fresh in your memory, you'll remember those little tiny details that are easy to forget a few months down the road. Right. Well, I would always do th also do things like... Um, some of the books that we used for different unit studies, because I used Konos for a great many years, I would color code those with stickers to the volume that they went to so that nobody would accidentally get rid of the books I needed for certain oh. units. Uh -huh. So those would be on the shelf, and I would check all of those again, too, and just mostly get things ready for the next year so it would be easier when it was time to start planning. Well, particularly if you have to purchase new items, um, this is that time of the year when people are selling old curriculum and there are book fairs and other things going on. Um, and you want to be able to get your materials at the best time of the year. So it's it's better to know what you have and what you're going to need right when you're wrapping up a year. Right. That was one of the things that was always exciting about ending a, a school year, like if it was a traditional school year or academic calendar was that book fair season was coming up. And I know that for quite a while now, nobody's been having those in person, but those are starting to start opening back up again. Mm -hmm. So that was highly motivating for me to figure out what I was going to need, look at what we were using, figure out what worked and what we wanted to keep using and what we needed to find in case we needed to replace something. What else might right. work? Right. So just sticking with your plan and having that plan um, is going to get you to the end of the school year in good shape. Right. I agree. One more thing, though, that we did always think about at the end of the year is can I simplify anything? Like when, I, when you're juggling a lot of children, you find ways to do two things at once or multitask with one of your subjects. And so at the end of the year was always the time to do that, too. It's like, is there anything I can do? What can I do to make this easier? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what can I do to make this work better? Or how can I use our time better? Just reevaluating, I suppose. Yeah, I think uh, that's and that's throughout the school year as well. Um, so a big part of Charlotte Mason um, style of education is read alouds, reading aloud um, from classic books. And I recently found a site called Story. Nori, that's S-T-O-R-Y-N-O-R-Y dot com. It's a free site um, and they have a Patreon so you can help support them if you feel inclined to. But they have people reading, um, reading aloud classic books. So my son has been, we've been doing Jungle Book and I've been in a bit of a time crunch. So I've been putting that on for my son and for me to listen to. 
and we're still getting that part of our schoolwork done, but it's freed me from having to do it so I can do something else at the same time. And sometimes that's why you get tired at the end of the school year because you've been doing so much and you've been maybe working harder than you need to. So figuring out what those annoying parts are and how to, um, to change them up is a really good way to finish your school year so you can be fresh when you go back to school. We're going to take a short break to hear a word from our sponsor. And when we get back, we'll talk some more about how you can keep learning all summer long. Our podcast today is sponsored by Transcript Maker. It's an online service that allows you to create professional high school transcripts in the comfort of your own home. It's always a good time to sign up for Transcript Maker, but there's never a better time than when your school year is ending. Oh, that's so true. I remember when I found Transcript Maker, I was getting ready to create my first high school transcript and I was so scared that I was gonna mess things up trying to use uh, calculations for GPA. And boy, when I found Transcript Maker, I was so relieved. Oh, I wish I'd had it or known about it back when I was creating my first ones with, you know, pencil and paper. And I think I had an Excel spreadsheet trying to figure all that out. I really, it would have made my life easier. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? There's a couple of ways for our listeners to make their lives easier. And one is to sign up for Transcript Maker's 14-day free trial so they can give the app a test drive and see how they like it. And the other way is to use our discount code HAPPY, H-A-P-P-Y in all caps, for 20% off when they subscribe. Transcript Maker, simply better transcripts. Welcome back. In the first half, we talked about wrapping up the school year, and now let's head into the summer. What are we gonna do this summer to keep learning going and have fun? What kind of things do you have planned to do, Holly? Well, every year I sit down and I get, get at my computer and I start looking to see what kind of free or low cost activities are being offered for children. Um, because nothing makes kids more excited than something that looks like fun, right? Reading programs. They like to, they like to do the activities. They like to fill out the little uh, ledgers and get their little rewards, but they're reading, which is what we want them to do. So I look for those kind of really fun um, activities that are community-based or, um, you know, library-based or whatever is available in the community, in our local area for kids to participate in. We did the same thing, and it was always so much fun when sometimes our local bookstore had a reading program and they would earn enough credits to get a little book at the end. End. And that was really a lot of fun. Just keep kept the reading going, which is what I wanted. But then they had a, a fun prize at the end. And what I really like about these reading programs, particularly the ones that the library sponsor and um, Half Price Books, is that they have suggested um, things to read around the theme that are um, age based. So you can pick out some books that are going to keep your child's skills where they are and help them maybe move up a little bit, you know, over the summer. And so um, I like to sit down and look at what the theme is and the recommended books, and then I start reserving them or, um, or looking to buy them. Um, I don't know how many states Half Price Books is in, but it's a big um, bookstore here in Texas, and they sponsor a reading program, and they have um, very affordable uh, books so and, or we go looking for them at our local thrift store so that we have mm -hmm. those materials and we're ready to go and we always sign up for multiple book clubs um, so what is like we double and triple dip right if we read one book <laughs> but, we, <laughs> but we turn in the reading logs to three usually it's three different entities and my son really loves that and it keeps him excited about reading which is we don't want anybody to lose their skills over the summer what do they call that um that decline or whatever. Right. Or a slide. A slide, yeah. Right. We don't want, want, slide we don't want backwards. All, Yeah, we don't want all that hard work and those gains that we made during the school year to evaporate in just a few months in the summer. Right. And the book clubs are fun. And then my kids are always reading so many books. They they were they were such avid readers, it wasn't really much chance of them slowing down, but it was nice for a change that they were tracking, you know, how many pages they could read a day, or usually they'd read so much further ahead than they were supposed to. 
And sometimes they just would have little contests with each other to see who could read the most books. And that wasn't the point, but it was all in good fun. Um, they were just reading things that they really enjoyed. And they also got to explore some books. We do a lot of reading for our topic, or we did in, during the school year. So it's nice for them to read something like just for the fun of reading. Mm -hmm. We were recently watching some movies and my son saw an ad for um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And he said, oh, look, there's a new movie. And I said, oh, even better. It's a book. We can read the book first yes, and then we can always. watch the movie. <laughs> so that's another really fun thing to do with your kids is that um, if there's a movie they're interested in watching and there's a book to uh, say, let's read the book first and then we'll watch the movie. So we like to read the book and then we have a movie night on Friday nights. Um, so I my son's really into contrasting and comparing the movie version to the to the book version um, so that's oh really i love that because mm -hmm. my kids were pretty uh, severe critics of movies that didn't <laughs> live up to the book but you have to know the book to know what's different with mm -hmm. the movie and our local theater i they didn't do this last year but they're doing it this next year has the like a dollar on tuesday movies oh, yeah. and so we mm -hmm. would get the whole the whole schedule and look over that and see if there was anything we wanted to to go and see just for some fun things that we did during the summer that we didn't have time to do during the year but i um i hadn't really thought about connecting the books to the ones so that's a great idea oh thanks it's been a lot of fun for for both of us and in fact um my son has gotten to the point now where he'll say um is there a movie did they make a movie out of this book like he's <laughs> really he's really into it you know, and, and you want to have fun in the summer, but you don't want to just let your days go slipping by without some kind of structure. The other thing that um, I did with him last year is I wanted to keep up his math skills, and I have quite a supply of math games, really fun games. Um, and so, like, when we have his pizza math, and he's ready probably for that this year because it's really about fractions, and we have... Um, just all kinds of games to keep up their skills and even, you know, expand their skills a little bit, but in the guise of playing something fun. Because, um, you know, you can't make everything be academic all summer. Summer should have a lot of fun memories, but you don't want to just fritter away your summer days and then a couple months go by and boom, here's um, the fall and you really don't even know what you did. Right. But there's always, you know, a little more downtime in the summer, and we would always, my grandparents played card games, and so they were teaching us different solitaire and things like that. And there's one where you put your cards down in a pyramid, and then you're picking up basically sums, picking up 13, or you're picking mm, up 10. Mm -hmm. and it's like all of that is all the different ways you can make 10, and we taught those to them as games, but I knew that they were practicing their math skills. Mm -hmm. And they just would play those games for fun. And Yeah, um, it's a great time to do um, some fun experiments with your kids. Um, you know, things that maybe you didn't have time to do during the school year. We see a lot of interesting things online that we don't necessarily have time to do during school. Like where you, uh, one is where you have uh, these beakers and you put food coloring in the rainbow. And then you put a paper towel in the uh, an end of a paper towel in one beaker and then in the adjacent beaker. And you do that all the way down, and then the color walks through the paper walks towel. Through, yeah. But we didn't really, we didn't do that at, during the school year. So I, I'm planning to do like maybe a Friday um, experiment day. And oh, the other, good. yeah, you know, I think that there's a lot of really fun stuff you can do that's maybe too time consuming during the school year. The other thing that I've done is, um, and last year it didn't happen because of COVID, and I don't know what what's going on, you know, where our listeners are um, listening to us from, but some camps are coming back. So in the past, my son has done a sports camp. Um, he's done a football camp. He's done um, vacation Bible school and other kinds mm -hmm. of things we didn't have last year, but they are coming back. And so a lot of those community-based type of camps, they are free or very low cost. And uh, in the case of the ones where he would go like for five days in the mornings, that was really a nice time for me as a homeschool mom to have some of my own downtime, you know, to think about how things went in the past year, what I want to do with the year coming up. Um, so look for those kind of things as well. 
Right. And then I always get uh, a lot of, not a lot, some more than usual parents are contacting me looking for tutoring over the summer. Um, I know we're talking about things for fun, but sometimes summer can be a good time to zero in or pinpoint a problem area and just spend mm -hmm. a little more leisurely time when you're not like in the rush of getting everything done every day. Right. To spend some time and target an area and work on it a little bit and a little bit less stressful way because it's the summer everything just seems a little bit more easygoing mm -hmm. in the summer and so i mean that's one other thing we we can use the summer for and then i actually us, did that oh sorry oh go ahead oh when when i started homeschooling um it was in the summer of 1993 and my oldest child had just finished first grade and the curriculum we were going to be using at the time was Rebecca. And I had pulled out some of the first grade books um, that someone had lent me and she couldn't read them. So I thought, oh, well, she's not gonna be able to do the second grade materials that she should be doing in the fall if we don't work now. And mm -hmm. I also knew that we were totally changing our lives because we had, I had uh, four kids at the time and only one child had been to school and it was public school. So everything was gonna be different. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna use the summer to create new routines and to remediate her reading level so she's ready for school in the fall. And so we started homeschooling light and working on, um, you know, routines and things like that so that when we got into all the schoolwork, because I would then I was going to have also, in addition to the second grader, a kindergartner, mm -hmm. and I was going to do a little preschool activities with my youngest too, we would not have such a sharp contrast. We'd be ready to just seamlessly step into that. So the summer is a really good time to um, remediate any issues and start thinking and implementing new routines. Mm -hmm. And it was for us, it was one of the times that we would level up skills. Like if they were going to graduate to a new household uh, job, then mm -hmm. they would get training over the summer so that by the time school rolled around and we were needing to get things done, they already knew how to do that and we mm. didn't have to spend and so some people would graduate to, you know, higher level jobs and then the younger one would take over the, the younger person. Anyway, it was just a time for teaching and training and getting ready. And it was not, again, summer just has a little bit more of an easygoing vibe and it was fun and we had time to work on that. And do, we did some award things in, this, in the summer, like how fast can we get things done, pulling all together so that we can all go and do something fun, go to the beach or the park or mm -hmm. something like that. But Level and I are just working on either scholastic things, academic things, or household things. Mm -hmm. um, summer's a good time for that. It is. It is. And you want to make your summers fun. It's just not, you don't want to look back and think everything was just drill and academics and drudgery because um, part of the learning lifestyle is that you are learning all the time. So it can take some pressure off of that. Oh my gosh, I've got to get all this material covered. The summer is a great time to keep learning, but in a more relaxed, more fun, whole family way. Mm -hmm. I used to say that we unschooled in the summer. We did unit studies the rest of the year, but the summertime we would just, we'd follow the rabbit trails if they were mm -hmm. reading something or wanted to know more about something, we would just go ahead and do that or take time to wonder about some different things that would happen and go find the extra library books for that and look it up. And, you know, I might, I don't know if I mentioned this before one day, we looked outside and there was an armadillo up in a tree. Oh, and I didn't know so, they went into trees. I don't think they usually do, <laughs> but it was very strange and we did it stopped everything just to kind of figure out, you know, is it going to come down? Can it get down by itself? How did it get up there? And anyway, it was just one of those impromptu things that happened that because it was summer, we just kind of looked up and found out everything we could about armadillos. And um, I'm still not sure. I mean, when we went back inside, at some point, it got out of the tree somehow. <laughs> when you stop staring at it well, yes but um oh, it was also you know summertime it's daylight longer and we mm -hmm. would stay up longer so we would do some studies about like just because we like to know the constellations and mm -hmm. it's stay outside or we're collecting more 
bugs and rocks and we just had all kind of things coming in <laughs> collections collections from the summer rocks and bugs and things and um summer was a good time for that and it was fun mm -hmm. yeah i'm i'm looking forward to summer um, we like to spend a lot of time outside, especially going to different waterways to go swimming. Uh, we have a lot of local waterways that um, are spring fed. So the water's sometimes the water's extremely cold. But very cold, yeah. In, in the very heat of summer, even that very cold water feels awfully nice. So yeah, summer is, uh, is going to be a fun time. Lots of learning, lots of activities, and um, lots of new experiences for us. And I am looking forward to hearing what people are doing this summer. Oh, me too. I always like to hear what people think of, because there are several things the different areas do that I am not familiar with. And even for me in this summer, I take time to pick up a book or explore a topic that I am wondering about and curious about. And so, you know, I always encourage moms to do a little bit of something for yourself, too. If you've put all your interests on the back burner, to you know focus on your children during the school year take some time to refresh and yes re home know. educators we really work ourselves hard and i think uh you know if you're a home educator it's really valuable to give yourself that downtime mm -hmm. i don't know if we mentioned art classes and drama classes and things like that that are open in the well it'll depend this summer but i know that's another thing that people can do to make their summer fun. And I was kind of considering jumping in on one of those myself. Oh, nice. Oh, and that reminds me that a lot of localities have um, things like Shakespeare in the Park or outside yes. plays, music. Um, you know, a lot of places will have um, an orchestra performing and, op you know, open air type of a concert, which I do. I have seen a lot more of those being publicized. So that's another lovely way to involve your kids in some kind of learning, but you know, it's, it's so fun. They won't realize that you're teaching about classical music or Shakespeare um, when they go to see plays. We went to see a play, um, oh, a couple summers ago, and my son is still talking about how much fun it was. It was one of those interactive plays where the actors actually go out into the audience. So oh. they were, they were <laughs> yes. chasing each other. We had popcorn. We were allowed oh, to throw with the bad guy. And he's still talking about that. Um, and we used to go to see, um, there's a local symphony, which they didn't perform last year, but we would go to see them perform. And so uh, we're hoping that this year they'll maybe be able to have some outdoor venues. He looked forward to going and hearing the instruments and seeing how they looked and watching the people play them. Um, kids really get into that stuff a lot more than you might expect. Oh, I think those are all great ideas. And we would love for any people to share the things that they have done. Just pop comment in on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere and share your ideas for things to do to make the summer a fun time of learning. At this time in our podcast, we usually answer a big question. Holly, what is today's big question? Well, um, our big question is going to take us a bit into the future. People are already wondering, what are they going to do and when should they start planning for fall? Oh, that is a good question. Yeah. I, I always took a break from the year we completed before I started working on planning for the fall. It's always in the back of your mind anyway, because you're observing your children and you're, you know, it's like, okay, we need to work on that a little bit or you need to, you know, whatever it is you need help with capital letters, or I can see you need to work on punctuation. You always, you know where your kids are in their classwork, but I would take a break and then I would start really lining out. I always had a, well, not a spreadsheet exactly, but a list of mm -hmm. who needed what. And I knew what units we were gonna plan. And a lot of that planning, when I was actively homeschooling my children, kind of could depended on when the book fairs were. And some of that has changed now, but I was having to go to the book fairs to get the books I wanted. But I would sketch out a plan and then start, you know, with my plan for the year and break it down into my months and know what units we were going to cover each month. And then also figuring out the next math book for the oldest one, because all the rest of them had trickled down to the, mm -hmm. we had them all. 
but what are you um have you already started planning or uh, yeah i i always start planning around spring break time so in march um and that's because right now people are selling their curriculum Oh, yeah. Um, and I and I always had to work on a really tight budget, particularly when I had five students um, that needed materials. So I always start planning early, and then if something's on sale, I can I can grab a hold of it. Um, if there, so you, there are different ways to get your curriculum. Um, one is that individual sellers. So people on your homeschool groups are probably already posting things. So some people are done with their math book or they're done with their mm -hmm. English resources. Um, and then there are often local used curriculum sales where you can go again and get your best dollar, you know, the most out of your dollar. And then after those two resources were exhausted for me and I've, and then I would look on uh, eBay or I'd look on Amazon or some other places. Finally, if I didn't have what I needed, I would go for, going to a big book fair with that had new items um, or ordering from a supplier. So um, if you want to get the best deals, you really need to plan. Like I would say plan now. Look at what you're doing now and see, okay, we're, we still want to do this unit study and we know what books we're going to need for the next grade. We still want, like I know I'm going to do Charlotte Mason through Ampleside Online. I already know what books I'm going to need because they have a book list. So I'm already getting, looking and see what do I already have and then starting to to call my materials. So I would say plan, start planning now. And particularly if you want to sign your kids up for um, some kind of classes in the fall, if you want to join a co-op or you want your kids to do um, one oh, day sign academy. Up. Yeah, because yeah. right so now, now. Yeah, signups are starting now and they're having like their open houses and their informational meetings, things like that. So really um, to plan for the fall, you really need to start in the spring. If you haven't started now, take a deep breath. You still have opportunities. You might have to get on a wait list if there's a co-op that's already filling up. But, you know, um, just I think now is the time to start planning. Right. A lot of those co-ops are already getting their plans and their uh, enrollment started. Sometimes there will still be some time. One year, we um, the local co-op was full. Like it was just always full and it hit its cap. And so they took the people on the wait list and we started another one just because there was not enough room in the in the building where the other co-op met for them to let anybody else in. Oh, sure. And And now, you know, with COVID, class sizes are smaller mm -hmm. in a lot of places. So, um, yeah, fall Make seems plan. far away. But, <laughs> yeah, but you probably, probably want to start planning now, especially if you want to sign up for anything that might have a cap on enrollment. Right. And it, like you said, people are selling their curriculum, so find those used curriculum groups and uh, get a jump on those. If you have homeschooling questions or comments, please email them to us at happyhomeschoolpod at gmail.com or send them to us on Twitter at underscore homeschoolpod or visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash happyhomeschoolpod and you can find us on Instagram and YouTube at happyhomeschoolpod. Thank you for listening today. I'm Melody. I'm Holly. Happy, Happy homeschooling. homeschooling. Hi, this is your host, Melody Gillum. Thank you for listening to the Happy Homeschooler podcast, a transcript maker production. My co-host is Holly williams Erbach. This episode was produced by Matthew Bass and edited by Nora Williams. Our graphic design is by Pete Soloway and our music is by The Great Pangolin. You can find our music on YouTube and Twitter at Kylie Wins. That's K-A-I-L-E-Y Wins. If you'd like to help our podcast grow, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or, as always, tell people about us. We're going to take a short break, and when we get back, we will talk some more. I, oh, I messed that up so badly. Let me try that again. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <sighs>